What's up, everybody? This is the first of Bible Sundays on a fourth star map. So we're going to start out with the book of Matthew, which is the first book of the Gospels. We're going to skip to the virginal conception of Christ. I'm not really concerned with the genealogy right now. This is how Jesus Christ came to be born. His mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they came to live together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a man of honor and wanting to spare her publicity, decided to divorce her informally. He had made up his mind to do this when the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you must name him Jesus, because he is the one who is to save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill the words spoken by the Lord through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had told him to do. He took his wife to his home and... Though he had not had intercourse with her, she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. Okay, so it's a heck of a way to start out the Gospels, uh, which is that you have Mary and Joseph. Uh, they're about to get married, or they are married, and immediately she's with a child, and it's not from Joseph. This is a stressful situation. It's a crazy situation to start out a story with. Uh, people think that the Bible is just a book of rules, um, and that couldn't be further from the truth. And so, so essentially, an angel appears to to Joseph in a dream and says, "You know, this is what we're going to do. Um, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you must name him Jesus." So it's interesting because this is not the first time that uh, angel an angel has appeared to a man named Joseph even in a dream. Um, if we remember, uh, Joseph and the the coat of many colors. This story from the Old Testament. Joseph was a prophet who uh, he had prophetic dreams, and he was able to help the pharaoh of Egypt at the time, save food, uh, store food uh, to avoid uh, famine. And there's many other times when angels appear to, uh, to people in dreams with the message of God as well. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later. But the first thing, uh, the first question that I had when, when reading through this again was, uh, it says, Now all this took place to fulfill the words spoken by the Lord through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Uh, which prophet uh, is going to be giving this, this, uh, this prophecy? And it's the prophet Isaiah uh, from the Old Testament. And this actually, the scripture comes from Isaiah 7, 14, where he says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. And what you're seeing on the screen right now is Emmanuel in Hebrew, uh, and it means God is with us. So where does this prophecy come from in Isaiah? This prophecy comes from Yahweh speaking to Ahaz. Uh, who is Ahaz? Ahaz was a king, and apparently, according to uh, Kings, Chronicles, and Isaiah, uh, spiritually, Ahaz was a disaster to his whole nation. Now, why was that? Uh, these three books point out that Ahaz imported the corrupt pagan religious practices of Mesopotamia to Jerusalem. Now, this involved worship of the heavenly bodies, the stars and the planets, uh, which we see a lot nowadays uh, in these ne neo-pagan uh, religious tendencies to uh, study astrology and tarot cards and things like that. Uh, not only that, it also involved child sacrifice, uh, which is an interesting aside because uh, child sacrifice historically was practiced in many pagan traditions and religions. 
um, and the Hebrew story of Abraham taking his son up to be sacrificed because God told him that's what he had to do. And then God finally saying, you know, don't sacrifice your son. This was the, the first time written down in a religious tradition um, the, uh, where God condemns the child sacrifice, essentially. All throughout history, uh, unfortunately, we find this tradition. Um, and in addition to that, also consulting with wizards and necromancers. So what you're looking at right now are three scriptures from Genesis, uh, Colossians, and 2 Timothy. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? From Colossians 2.18 Let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism and worship of angels, going on in detail about visions, puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind. And 2 Timothy 4.4 4, They will turn away from listening to the truth and give their attention to legends. So this is essentially kind of the what was... Uh, happening in the time of Ahaz and the type of corruption that he was bringing to his nation at the time. Uh, his name is connected with the uh, sun worship, which survived until the times of Joset, Josiah nearly a century later, uh, and that information is from 2 Kings 23 11. So in this photo you see the sort of imagery we see from neo-pagan New Age uh, religious thinking, uh, which is essentially, you know, worship of the heavenly bodies, stars and planets, things like that. These are shamans or wizards, necromancers, people who believe in magic, people who mess around with spirits, things like that. This is a depiction of sun worship. Sun worship was another thing cross-culturally, cross-historical time periods was extremely prevalent in history. All right, so we're gonna leave this on the screen while we talk about this. So back to Ahaz though. Uh, of course, it says there were minor cultural benefits from the importations of these uh, things. Uh, worship of the heavenly bodies, child sacrifice, consulting with wizards. Uh, enough to provide their advocates a certain plausibility uh, for a beautiful altar of Damascus. Um, so, and it talks about modernizing aesthetics. So uh, essentially what it's saying is that although these things brought about the eventual destruction of the kingdom, at the time, aesthetically, they were praised uh, for having cultural benefits. So we think we see things like that now as well. Things that will eventually lead to uh, destruction of society being praised uh, as beneficial. So again, Emmanuel is the prophecy of the of the son that the virgin will conceive and give birth to. It means God is with us. So back to dreams and angels appearing in dreams. Uh, this is a depiction of Jacob's ladder from the Old Testament. Let me see what scripture Jacob's ladder is actually from. So if you go to Genesis 28, 12, this has the story of Jacob's ladder. So it says, meanwhile, Jacob left their Sheba and set out for Haran. On reaching a certain place, he spent the night there because the sun had set. And taking one of the stones from that place, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. And Jacob had a dream about a ladder that rested on the earth with its top reaching up to heaven. And God's angels were going up and down the ladder. And there at the top, the Lord was standing and saying, I am the Lord, 
the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you now lie. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and east and north and south. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Look, I am with you, and I will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob woke, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was unaware of it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! There is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So the angel appearing to Joseph and giving him information about the, the virgin conception of Christ is not unprecedented. This is a depiction of the angel coming to Joseph. And this is a depiction of the prophet Joseph dreaming. And he had these prophetic dreams that were very symbolic and mysterious, and he was able to interpret them. Uh, like I said, he, he dreamt of these uh, stalks of wheat or, or wheat bundles. Uh, and he interpreted it to mean that they needed to stockpile food because a famine was coming. And lo and behold, um, the message of God came through and they were able to uh, save the people at the time from famine. We'll probably get more into that story later as, as we do more of these Bible Sundays. Okay, and that brings us to the visit of the Magi. So... Jesus was born in Bethlehem during the reign of, of King Herod. And King Herod, let's just get into the text itself. The visit of the Magi, chapter 2 of the Gospel of Matthew. After Jesus had been born at Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod, some wise men came to Jerusalem from the east. Where is the infant king of the Jews, they asked. We saw his star as it rose, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed, and so was the whole of Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, and inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea, they told him, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared and sent them on to Bethlehem. Go and find out all about the child, he said, and when you have found him, let me know, so that I may too go and do him homage. Having listened to what the king had to say, they set out, and there in front of them was the star they had seen rising. It went forward and halted over the place where the child was. The sight of the star filled them with delight. And going into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and falling to their knees, they did him homage. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, but they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod and return to their own country by a different way. Okay, so the opening of the of the book or the Gospel of Matthew is so interesting because in the first two primary chapters and parts, there's two mentions of prophetic scripture being fulfilled. The one from Isaiah about the virgin conception, and then the second, which is that uh, out of Bethlehem will come a leader who will shepherd uh, Israel. And then also there's two dream sequences where an angel comes to these main characters, uh, first to Joseph, and then second to these these kings that come from different lands to pay homage to the Messiah. Um, and in the second dream, the angels come to warn uh, the Magi not to go back through Herod's land uh, because of what Herod has planned for the Messiah. So uh, they offered him the wealth of Arabia, which is gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so moving on to uh to the flight into egypt and the the massacre of the innocents um this is another depiction of the or depiction of the 
magi visiting the Messiah. And here's another one. As you can see, the three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, the three magi, the baby Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. All right, moving on to the flight into Egypt. So the Magi were warned in a dream not to go back through Herod's land. Now Joseph also had a second dream that warned him to, uh, to escape with Mary and Jesus into Egypt uh, because essentially Herod intends to, to kill the Messiah. Uh, which is another instance of child sacrifice, which brings us back to the character in Isaiah, where the prophetic scripture of the virgin conception comes from, uh, Ahaz, who is bringing uh, uh, the worship of the stars and the planets, uh, child sacrifice, um, and what was that third thing? and consulting with wizards and necromancers. So just as a quick aside, we see these three things paralleled in modern society. Um, the worship of the heavenly stars and planets as astrology, child sacrifice as abortion, and consulting with wizards and necromancers as uh, just the new age neo-pagan religious tendencies in general, tarot cards, all of that stuff uh, that are becoming so popular with so many people nowadays. Okay. After they had left, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother with you, and escape into Egypt, and stay there until I tell you, because Herod intends to search for the child and do away with him. So Joseph got up, and taking the child and his mother with him, left that night for Egypt, where he stayed until Herod was dead. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that he had been outwitted by the wise men, and in Bethlehem and its surrounding district, he had all the male children killed who were two years old or, or under, reckoning by the date he had been careful to ask the wise men. It was then that the words spoken through the prophet Jeremiah were fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing and loudly lamenting. It was Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they were no more. So this is heavy. Um, so, so yeah, essentially, uh, this part also has two additional prophetic scriptures that are being fulfilled in, uh, I called my son out of Egypt, and then the, uh, the lament of, of Rachel weaving for her children. So we're going to get into a, a, a the next passage is from Egypt to Nazareth, and there's some interesting speculation on the linguistics of uh, the prophecy here that is fulfilled. Okay. After Herod's death, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, "Get up, take the child and his mother with you, and go back to the land of Israel." For those who wanted to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up, and taking the child and his mother with him, went back to the land of Israel. But when he learnt that Archelaus had succeeded his father Herod as ruler of Judea, he was afraid to go there, and being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. There he settled in a town called Nazareth. In this way, the words spoken through the prophets were to be fulfilled. He will be called Nazarene. So this is the third prophetic dream uh or at least dream that uh joseph receives from an angel with direction from god uh, and these are just in the first two chapters um so third dream that joseph receives and then there's one two three four prophetic scriptures from the old testament that are fulfilled so the gospel of matthew starts out extremely strong in laying the foundation of the fact that the messiah coming this baby Jesus, or Yeshua, or Aisa, uh, is truly the Messiah um, and the Son of God. I was actually reading whether or not 
some gospels establish that Jesus became the Messiah and Son of God, like throughout fulfilling prophecies throughout his life. And then some of the gospels contend that Jesus was the Messiah and the Son of God from the beginning. And I think that's the case that the Gospel of Matthew is making because it's it's chock full of, of four, one, two, three, four, actually five prophetic scriptures that are being fulfilled. So the Gospel of Matthew is making the case that Jesus is the Son of God from conception even. Okay, so now what, which prophet said that he will be called a Nazarene? So this actually comes from Isaiah 11 1 and he says there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of jesse and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit um now here in the bible do we have a prophet or prophet saying that the messiah would be born in nazareth and that he would be called a nazarene um so i found some of this information on the internet that the name for the town of nazareth may have come from the semitic root nazar which means to keep watch or to protect. There are some who claim that this may have been the home of a particular Jewish sect called the Nazarites, who took on a vow to live a life of separation as Nazar also means to consecrate and make separate. Uh, they would not cut their hair or drink wine. Uh, some feel that Jesus himself was a Nazarite, which could be. Uh, there are a lot of uncertainties here, but one thing is for certain, the Hebrew Bible makes no mention of the town of Nazareth or that the Messiah would be a Nazarene, or does it? So, essentially, the information that I found, um, it's not here for some reason, I don't know where I put it, but I heard maybe if somebody watches this video and has more information on this, I would, I would love to hear it, uh, and I would love to hear what you guys think. But I want to say that I found somewhere that the, the root word for Nazarene in Hebrew uh, means roots or means like a branch of his roots or something. And it goes back to this scripture um, where the word Nazarene is, is directly connected to this scripture. Uh, Nazarene being or meaning that uh, it is the, the roots that he will come from. Uh, this lineage and I guess that's what makes the lineage in the beginning of the gospel of Matthew important actually that makes sense so that so it ties back to the lineage um, that he comes from uh, a shoot from the stump of Jesse uh, and that he's a direct descendant of Abraham which is the father of of Judaism and the three uh, Abrahamic religions, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all together. Okay, and then also, so where did the, which prophet said, uh, well, it was Jeremiah, and he, and he talked about Rachel uh, weeping and lamenting for her children. Um, let's go into that really quick. So Jeremiah 31, 15 says, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamenting and weeping bitterly. It is Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children, because they are no more. Yahweh says this, Stop your weeping, dry your eyes, your hardships will be redressed. They shall come back from the enemy country. There is hope for your descendants. Your sons will come home to their own lands. And then Micah 5.1 says this, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means among the leaders of Judah. From out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people Israel. So this goes back to the, the visit of the Magi. So which prophet wrote uh, that the Messiah would come from Bethlehem? And this is, uh, this is Micah. From out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people Israel. His origin goes back to the distant past, to the days of old. Abraham being a Nazarene coming from the shoot of the stump of Jesse and a branch from his roots. Yahweh is therefore going to abandon them till the time when she who is to give birth gives birth, the virginal conception. Then the remnant of his brothers will come back to the sons of Israel. He will stand and feed his flock with the power of Yahweh, with the majesty of the name of his God. They will live secure. 
for from then on he will extend his power to the ends of the land. He himself will be peace. He will deliver us from Assyria should it invade our country, should set it foot should it set foot inside our frontiers. And so so it says he himself will be peace. And there's a ton of Bible scriptures that link link Jesus with with peace. So there's one that says I want to get the actual the actual scripture so let me do that really quick. There's one where he says blessed are the peacemakers. John 16:33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 14, 27. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Matthew 5, 9. And we'll end on this. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. All right, so this, pretty sure, yeah, this uh, this concludes uh, the first installment of Bible Sundays, going over the connection between the Gospel of Matthew and not only the book of Isaiah, but also the other prophetic books, uh, Jeremiah, Micah, and others. Uh, we will continue uh, with the Gospel of Matthew uh, when I see you next time. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any suggestions, uh, leave it down in the comments and be sure to subscribe. Uh, we have a podcast, a fourth star map on Spotify. We do all sorts of content. We do literary analysis, media analysis, uh, short discussion starters. Uh, I like to talk about, uh, tech news, all sorts of stuff, psychology, um, yeah, subscribe on here, fourth star map, and listen to the podcast on Spotify. And we'll see you guys next time.